Hi friends, it's Mirnikor, and today I'm so happy because I gotta talk about my October TBR. October has one of my favorite booktube events, Victober. It is to read Victorian literature during October. I got excited for Victober every year, even before I joined booktube. But to be honest, I haven't successfully completed a Victober yet due to my slow reading speed, and also reading classic is more challenging to me since I'm reading in my second language, but this year I am prepared, I'm pumped, and I can't wait. But before we're talking about the TBR for Victober, let's not forget that we're still doing the From and About Asia reading project. And in October, we're reading all about Saudi Arabia. So I'll, I'll talk about the TBR for Saudi Arabia first. If you have seen the blog post I put together for Saudi Arabia reading resources, you will know that it is so hard to narrow down the TBRs because there are so many interesting books. I had the hardest time narrowing down my TBR for four books, so without further ado, let's dive in. The first book I got here is Hand and the Soldiers by Badria Albasher, translated by Sanan Dehir. This is for reading prompt one, read a book by Saudi authors, and this is talking about a young Saudi Arabian woman who is frustrated because she found that her identity is represented by soldiers and she is determined to establish herself as a writer and also make her own decisions, but the society simply won't let her. As she fought her way through, she come to understand more of the suffering that the older generations had and also how the traditions has impacted all the people around her. This book only has 18 ratings on Goodreads, but it sounds fascinating and it also says that the the author doesn't shy away from topics like sexuality and uh, religion, so I'm hoping to get some insights on those topics as well. And there's another book on this category that I probably won't read, but I just want to put it here and also I place a hold from the library because life happens, you never know. And the book is called Girls from Riyadh by Raja Althane, translated by Marilyn Booth. This book follows four young Saudi women and writing in the format of email exchanges. It's talking about how the young women are living a restricted life back home, but also they travel around the world and discussing what they see. This is one of the most popular books by um, Saudi women writers. It has been translated into 25 different languages, but also because of the subject matter, it was banned in Saudi Arabia. Next up, I have some books for the reading prompt category two, read a book about the culture of the sub-region of our target country, but I'll just read a book about culture of Saudi Arabia. The first one being In the Land of Invisible Women by Kwanta A. Ahmed. I didn't mean to make this a feminist reading month, but somehow most of the books that was appealing to me are all about women and women rights. This is a memoir of a British Muslim doctor who accepted a job in Saudi Arabia after she's denied a visa to stay in the United States where she studied and practiced. So she took the job, went to Saudi Arabia, which is a land that she thought she understands and belongs to, but instead she found very self culture shocks and challenges. I found the perspective of this book is so unique because we're following a British professional who lived in the US for a period and also went to Saudi Arabia. Following, I have yet another book talking about Saudi women. It is called A Society of Young Women by Amelie Le read translated by Kate Ross. This book is more like a social study talking about Saudi youth culture, especially the culture among young women and their challenges and their changes in this rapidly evolved society on campus, in workplace, and in many other general places. But the book also touches on the topics, for example, in order to feel included, Saudi young women must put them under a heavy male gaze, they must be feminine, be fashionable and be modern, and this is the part that interests me the most. So it will be interesting to see how Saudi youth is changing the society. However, the book is published in 2014. I think things may have changed from the book published till now. The last book on my TBR for Saudi Arabia is the only one that doesn't directly deal with women's rights. It's called Inside the Kingdom by Robert Lacey. This book is more like a modern history of Saudi Arabia, focusing on the time after 1970s 
oil boom and talking about how people need to adapt to this fast-paced world with the religious law and how that redefined the country. I look forward to the insights that this book may provide, but again, this book was published in 2009, so as a nonfiction talking about politics and economy, this book may be outdated by now. But nonetheless, I think it will be a good resource for us to learn more about Saudi Arabia. Pulling, let's talk about the books I have for Victober. There are five challenges for this year's Victober. I tried my best to combine the books together since some of the books on my TBR are quite long. The first challenge came from Kate from Kate Howe, and her challenge is to read a Victorian sensation novel. If you are like me, you're not really sure about what is a sensation novel, I will link Kate's a video about sensation novel and also her recommendations down below in the description box so you can go to the experts for more recommendations. As for me, I'll go for the easy route and read the book that defines a sensation novel, that is The Woman in White by Wiki Collins. This is one of the Penguin Cloth Bound classics I have but I haven't read and all I know about it is a gothic tale and also it has a mystery that we need to uncover along with the main character. I'm looking forward to reading it and also get more feelings about what is really a sensation novel. And uh, this book is quite chunky, more than 600 pages, so finger crossed. The second challenge comes from Kitty from Books and Things, that is to read a Victorian novel set in countryside and or in a city. And for this challenge, I'll reread the Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. This is one of the books that I read and loved in Chinese, and I always want to reread it again. It is a historical fiction set in London and Paris during the French Revolution, and it has the famous opening, it is the best of the time, it is the worst of the time, and I loved it when I read it, and I'm thrilled to dive back into it again. And also, it has cities on the title. This third challenge comes from Lucy from Lucy the Reader, and it is to read a book with a female main character. And I will be reading Alice's Adventure in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This is one of those classics that I am sure I have read in some sort of picture format, but I'm not sure if I have read the full story of it. So hopefully after October, I'll, be, I'll have the full confidence to say that I have read Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. The group challenge is to read a Victorian book that you haven't read before. For me, obviously, it will be The Woman in White. And also the bonus challenge is to read a Victorian book, a section of a Victorian book out loud. I have something planned for that, so stay tuned for that. So that's all the seven books I want to read for the two events. But before we dive into some of the stray books I want to read during October, I want to quickly mention Mexican Gothic by Silvia Maruto Garcia. Actually, it's not quickly mentioned. I put this book on my TBR. <laughs> From September 15th to October 15th is the Hispanic Heritage Month. I haven't started to uh, learn Spanish recently, so that's a plus. Anyhow, I watched an amazing video by Roxanne from the Novel Sanctuary. She did an amazing recommendation videos for Hispanic Heritage Month, I'll link down below, and this book grabbed my attention right away. This is talking about a young woman uncovering some mystery around her newlywed cousin and also rescuing her. I don't know what grabbed my attention, maybe it's the stunning cover or maybe because the gothic theme which is perfect for October. The hold has been placed in the library and I can't wait to pick it up. Now let's talk about some stray books that I will be reading in October that not for any events. And first up, we have The Mercies by Karen Melwood Hagerage. And this is a historical fiction set in Norway in 1617, talking about a fishing village in Norway. And one day, all the men are wiped out by a fishing disaster. So leaving all the women in the village, not only they need to suffer from griefing, but also they need to um, survive. And fast forward a couple years, a couple came to the village with the husband as a little bit sinister, and the wife is terrified by the husband's power and authority. And also, this village is the first time where the wife saw independent women in her entire life. This book sounds right at my alley. Norway, you know, historical fiction, and 
strong independent female characters so everything i will enjoy next up i will for sure raid the Flames of Album by Jean Menzies over at Jean Bookish Thought. I was on hiatus on Booktube for so long, I pretty much decked the hole and buried myself there. So I did not know that she came out with an entire fantasy novel when I was gone, and I was so happy when I found it. Fantasy is not my usual genre, but you'll see I have another one coming up. This book is talking about a young scholar who accidentally awakened a dragon, and everything about her routine comfortable life has changed ever since. I heard it's cozy, it's hopeful, it celebrates queer identity, and everything just fantastic, and I can't wait to dive in. And speaking of the second fantasy, which is also the last book on this TBR, I got Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marilyn James. To be completely honest, this is a total cover buy. I, you know, I'm sorry, but not sorry. And I just, I just keep thinking about this book Ever since the first time I saw it on booktube, I just cannot wipe it away from my mind. I have eyeing on it for about 4 or 5 months and now I finally pull the trigger to buy it and now it's mine. It's a pretty book of mine. This is a fantasy novel heavily inspired by African mythology and history and it's talking about a young hunter who is tracking down this mysterious boys who disappeared three years ago and he worked with a group of unusual people including shape-shifting man-animal leopard. I don't really read a lot of fantasy so I don't really know what to expect but maybe this is the best way to go into a new book. And there you have it, that's all the books on my October TBR. I know it's a lot but one can have a dream. So I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. Let me know what books are on your October TBR or what books you are looking forward to and I hope you happy reading, stay healthy, I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye!